All right, let's get ready for the heat wave. We'll start out first on Sunday morning. Sunday is going to be hot for the afternoon. We'll take a look at everybody's daytime eye here. But the real focus, as we saw uh, in the last visit, is really Monday and Tuesday. But the start of Sunday looks great. And it's relatively comfortable out there right now. It's mainly mid to upper 60s. By the way, the sun is coming up in just about one minute. 642 actually is official sunrise time. So Concord at 63, San Jose at 63. It's near 60 in Oakland at 63 in Livermore. Those numbers are a little warmer. This is a bit of a head start. Expected to feel a little warmer than this tomorrow morning, and especially by the time we get to Tuesday morning. But here are the daytime highs on Sunday afternoon. And a couple of things stand out here. Obviously, the 90s for the peninsula. You're going to feel this today. We'll be looking at 100 in the North Bay, 94 San Jose. But it's the difference over here that begins to show us where the real concern for the next two days is. Because you see the, the change in temperatures from the East Bay shoreline up and down 880 to the inland valleys over here, out in the Tri-Valley and Concord, even up and down 680. The contrast is now really getting stark. It'll be 104 in Livermore today, 89 in Hayward, 84, uh, 85 in Oakland, 104 in Concord. So if we look at where the heat advisory is, in contrast to where the excessive heat warning now, it makes sense in light of that. If you're on that East Bay shoreline or the peninsula, you've got a heat advisory. That's the National Weather Service telling you to just be aware and start thinking about the possibility for heat to have an impact on your overall well-being. But it becomes a very different story, very different wording when you look at the excessive heat warning. San Jose, you're in this, as are all of the inland valleys. The word warning, again, the distinction there is the National Weather Service's way of telling you there's very little doubt in this. This is going to happen. It will have impacts on your health if you're not taking the appropriate action. Another way to look at it is to go to the heat risk map, which shows you a color code the deeper the shade of red, the higher the degree of risk for heat-related health issues. Here's Sunday. Watch the difference on Tuesday. That's a stark contrast. And these colors are even shading a little more now into the deep red and purple for the inland parts of the bay than they were yesterday in terms of this Tuesday forecast. And here's what stands out. Why is San Jose included in the excessive heat warning? And the peninsula only has the heat advisory? That might be the best way to see the difference here. That higher degree of confidence when you get specific instead of just using county outlines. Just show me on the map in a visual way where the highest degree of risk is going to be. And keep looking for those deeper shades of colors and you'll see kind of where you are. North Bay, at elevation, it's going to be worse actually than down in a lot of the valleys. Speaking of risks to keep in mind, let's say you just have a daytime high of 95. So Peninsula, that's you thinking, all right, we're escaping the worst of this. At a 95 degree day inside your car in direct sunlight, after an hour, it is nearly 140 degrees. That's another major concern when we start talking about heat related health risks, not only for pets, but most importantly, for small children left in cars for any amount of time over the next few days. It's going to be imperative that we are all staying on guard for something like that. There's your seven day forecast. Two first alert weather days, for Oakland and San Jose, Monday and Tuesday, it does get better once we get towards the second half of the week, but it's still hot. But it's a slightly different story here. The first alert days are still Monday and Tuesday here for inland East Bay and North Bay Valleys. But we're going to have to watch after that because it's not like the heat just turns off completely. It comes down, it gets out of the excessive category, but that's still going to be a rough go for much of next week until we get to next Saturday, Devin. So if we still have triple digit temperatures, why aren't we thinking the bracket of the heat wave as extending deeper into the week? I think because by that point, hopefully we've gotten through the worst of it. And the concern looking at these two days is to really draw. This is the whole point of first alert forecasting is to really draw your attention to the days that have the highest risk of impacting you, no matter what it is through the course of the year. In this case, with a heat wave, those are the two days that we really need to hone people's attention on. We'll still talk about the heat advisories and the excessive heat warnings back here as they're called for. We may have to stay in first alert status as we get there, but clearly those are the two days we are committed to making sure people are aware of before they get here. It's going to be an intense 48 hours. Thank yes, you. it will.